I wanted to be an artist as a kid, but I didn't know how to paint. I wasn't good at it in college. I failed art history twice. I doubted my abilities. The stuff that I thought was cool, you know, to actually belittle me. I was definitely scarred by that. I was like people laughing at my ideas. Saying that I was going to be a contemporary artist was never in the plans for me. I had chose what we considered the safe careers. And then all of a sudden the market imploded and they were just like firing everyone left and right. Along with myself. You know, you work hard and you fail. You get up, you work harder, you fail. Get up, you work harder, you fail. And eventually you're like, why am I even getting up? People start to look and act a certain way towards you, like you're a failure, so I don't want to be associated with you. I had two choices in my head. I said, man, I seem to be gonna kill myself or I'm gonna paint. So I decided to paint. I have to blacken all my canvases. I feel I'm going into the darkness and just pulling out the color, the inspiration. I had no idea what to paint and how to paint. Most artists won't tell you their technique. How'd you do that? They'll kind of act like it's some secret thing. So YouTube was my first teacher. I had what I call virtual mentors, the actual painters themselves, where I would watch these videos and research techniques. And the first painting that I attempted to do didn't look right. <laughs> Instead of like putting it away, I kept on going. So my style just came out. A skull for me represents the symbol of a person's spirit. It's like I'm wrapping that person's soul around their skeletal system. I woke up. I sat there and I paint every day. I literally didn't talk to anyone for about a year. I had been painting so often that I had injured my right shoulder just from repetitive motion. When I look at some of the most successful artists, the amount of work they produce and the intensity that they produce at work, that's my bar. My first mural was the first time anyone has ever seen my paintings. I was a little nervous, but when you put your work on the wall, you get a critique. All right, come on, give it up. And there are times in the middle of a painting that you're like, oh, this is gonna be horrible. Stand right there and look at it. Oh. But it's where you fight through it. In my head, I'm just going through this epic battle. I'm fighting with the paint, I'm fighting with the colors, I'm fighting with the composition. Focus on making sure that you can walk away from something that you could be beyond proud of. From the minute I put it on the wall, it just went like wildfire.
first couple months that people gave me a positive response was unexpected. Well, I'm not going back to where I was. I'm focused on moving forward. If I knew I looked at myself objectively, I could point myself in the right directions. I got an analytics application to show me exactly what people think about my work. Who likes it, which countries. Gives me kind of a little more like data that I can sink my teeth in to understand which paintings do they like the most. And then you enhance that. What they're not leaning towards, you analyze it. Before I started painting, I didn't really consider myself an artist because I feel that it's such a title that has to be awarded to you. And it doesn't have to be awarded to you by a organization or one person. I feel that it has to be awarded to you by the people. I think I'm grateful that people really like my work and I'm grateful that they express it. I felt that at the end of my day, what would I leave? As an artist painting, I can die tomorrow and there's something there. There's a DNA, there's a brightness, there's light. That will always be there.